Hello, and welcome to the Composer Toolbox, the show that looks at the individual techniques used by master composers and how to practically apply them. First up in this introductory episode, we'll be taking a brief trip back to the 70s and 80s to look at what the process was for creating the scores for the original Star Wars films. Now, although the first film I will be looking at in this series is the original A New Hope, the most information available is about The Empire Strikes Back, so the images and documentaries that you'll be seeing are mostly from that film. Now, that being said, let's get right into it. Williams got the job for the original Star Wars film after being recommended by Steven Spielberg to George Lucas after Williams had just got done scoring Jaws. Williams read the script but didn't actually start scoring the film until more than a year later due to his scoring of the film's family plot in Black Sunday. Until then, Lucas had tempted the whole movie with classical music, such as The Ride of Spring for the desert scenes and Dvorak's New World Symphony for the throne room scene. Rosa's Ivanhoe was used for the main titles, and Bruckner's Ninth Symphony was used as Luke's theme. By the time Williams was brought on board just after New Year's, they had a pretty extensive temp score mixed in with the sound effects. After viewing the film, Lucas, Williams, music supervisor Lionel Newman, music editor Ken Wanberg, and Paul Hirsch quickly spotted the film over the course of just two days, using the temp music as a guide. According to John Williams, the temp track only helped to convince him that the traditional orchestra idiom was right for the film. Quote, He didn't want, for example, electronic music. He didn't want futuristic cliché outer space noises. He felt that, since the picture was so highly different in all of its physical orientations, with the different creatures, places unseen, sights unseen, and noises unheard, that the music should be on fairly familiar emotional ground. I think what George's temp track did was to prove that the disparity of styles was the right thing for this picture." End quote. So, after spotting the film, Williams spent the months of January and February writing the score. Williams finished the score on schedule and began recording the score at the beginning of March of 1977 at Anvil Studios in Denham. With 14 three-hour recording sessions with the London Symphony Orchestra, the score was recorded in about seven working days. Most days there was a morning and afternoon session, but some days even had three sessions. Then, when editing the music to make it fit the picture, music editor Ken Wanberg had to do a lot of tweaking to the timing of the music since Williams had to start writing the score before the picture was locked, and for that matter, before filming was even totally completed. But eventually, the music and the rest of the soundtrack was mixed, and we got what we see today. And, really, that's about it for the original Star Wars. For The Empire Strikes Back, for whatever reason, the most information about the scoring process exists, so we'll dive into more detail here. So, when composing, the first thing that Williams would do in the morning is go to the music editor, Ken Wanberg, who would give Williams a slice of the film to work on for that day. He would also prepare detailed cue sheets with timings in a fraction of a second. Williams would then go back to his piano and, with various help, write about two minutes of score a day. Of course, due to time constraints, Williams didn't orchestrate his own scores. Rather, he wrote the music and what the orchestration ought to be on this six to eight line sketch score. Uh, don't worry, I'll be making a separate video on how he writes the sketches and his shorthand later. Towards the end of the day, Williams would take what he got done back to Wanberg to check and make sure the score synced up against the picture. Then, at the very end of the day, he would go over the score with his orchestrator, Herbert Spencer, who would then orchestrate what Williams had wrote that day, the next day. This documentary also makes it seem like Spencer was working in the room directly next to Williams simultaneously, which would allow Spencer to ask questions and clear up any confusion easily in relation to Williams' sketch. Again, when it came time to record the score, Williams used the London Symphony Orchestra at Anvil Studios, as well as EMI Studios at Abbey Road. For this film, 72 of the musicians had played the score for the original film only three years prior. But this score had quite a bit more music, 108 minutes of music to be exact. Due to this, there were 18 three-hour sessions spread over about two weeks. According to Williams, quote, That's quite a bit of time, but we had a lot of music. In a normal symphonic setting, you wouldn't need 18 sessions to record an LP with an hour-long piece on either side. But in recording for film, you have problems of synchronization that slow down the process." End quote. <laughs> During this process, a cue was on average rehearsed one or two times, this was sight reading, and then a final recording would be made that was in sync with the picture. And that's pretty much it. Nothing really special or unique happened during the scoring process for Star Wars. There's not much practical application here besides being able to understand the film scoring process in a real life example. But I'm going to cut this video here and keep it short because I know the next few will be much longer. So, thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you later. Goodbye! Oh, gents, good reading. Good for you.